I had trained for years to reach that moment. I'm in a tournament room where it's dark and very cold. I've navigated a field of several hundred, mostly male entrants, to reach this final round. Across the table sits my final opponent, a well-known player with worlds of experience beyond me. Now it all comes down to me and the hand I was dealt. Seven of hearts on the river. I regulate my breathing. I think, assess the odds, and take in the moment. And then I hear myself say it. I'm all in. The entire room. <gasps> I sit still, waiting, looking directly at my opponent. She gives me a long look in return, double checks her cards, then moves all of her chips in. This is it, there's no going back. She opens her cards confidently to show a pair of queens. I smile, turn over my hand, a pair of aces. In that moment, I won my first World Series of Poker Circuit Championship ring. When I said I had trained to accomplish this win, I'm referring to training my brain because I believe that poker is a sport for the mind. Honestly, I never imagined I'd be here. I was born in Vietnam and came to the US when I was five years old. Left home at 17 and worked my way through school and a successful career in the corporate world of film finance. I started playing poker as a social sport about a dozen years ago, but found myself wanting more from it. I kept competing and learning and training my mind. It led me to win two WSOP rings and other championship titles. Today, I'm the CEO of a poker tour, founder of the world's largest women's poker organization, and a principal in multiple poker-related businesses. So you can believe me when I say, Learning poker is worth the time. It can bring you great rewards. Most people talk about poker as a game you play. And I started that way also. I wasn't in it for the money and I didn't need to crush people's souls to validate my ego. Through my years of playing though, I began to see that poker is more than a game. Let me explain why I believe poker is a sport for the mind, because I have experienced it firsthand. I noticed how poker adds unique abilities to our lives that can be used to our advantage. On top of that, it's a lot of fun, especially when you win. <laughs> Today, I'm going to share what I've learned and how the poker-powered brain affects your cognitive skills, and helps develop mental acuity, focus, patience, and emotional discipline. Just like in life, all these skills matter much more than the hand you're dealt. So you might be thinking, can I make my brain stronger by playing poker? Yes! And you don't have to be a professional or play all the time. By playing poker often though, you can rewire your brain for the better. How do the skills you gain enhance your abilities as a human? You get better at decision making, gain deeper intuition, increase skills of critical and strategic thinking, and gain a better understanding of others. So let's delve a little deeper and take a peek at your brain on poker. You actually get smarter every time you play because poker can improve something called neuroplasticity. As you use neural pathways again and again, you build up the myelin around them. Those pathways get stronger. Brain cells actually get stronger too. Conditioning like this improves brain chemistry, making the brain much more efficient and faster, which can actually expand your mental abilities by nurturing your creativity, and intuition, 
When your brain is engaged and frequently exercised, it gets stronger, just like any other organ. Let's address a particular bonus of such exercise. Working the brain may also slow down its aging. Exercising our synapses and neurons and increasing our ability to think and strategize can help us to postpone and sometimes avoid our loss of memory or ability to process and remember. Alzheimer's is a disease that more than 6 million Americans and millions more worldwide live with today. There is much research underway, some of it's being led by my dear friend and associate Maria Shriver, founder of the Women's Alzheimer's Movement. Our mission is to prevent Alzheimer's by keeping aging brains active, especially in women who are 66% of those diagnosed. The earlier you start activating your brain, the better. This study from the Helen Wills Neuroscience Institute at UC Berkeley looked at the deposition in the brain of amyloid proteins, a marker for Alzheimer's disease, at different levels of cognitive engagement. What you can see is that levels are high in patients with Alzheimer's disease, low in young, healthy people, and almost as low in older people with the highest level of cognitive engagement. Of course, poker isn't the only method of cognitive engagement, but it's so much more fun than the others. <laughs> Did you know that poker can actually change the way you think? It's true. Consider the comparison of the brain patterns of an amateur poker player and an expert late in a hand, measured by using and an EEG headset. For the amateur, almost all of the activity is on the right side of the brain. They're just winging it by intuition. The expert pattern shows two things. The expert is using more of the intuitive right side of the brain than the amateur, but the expert is also using the analytic left side almost as much. We've seen how poker can make your mind stronger and more resilient, but let's go beyond science and into practical application in your life. Stakes can be high or low in poker as they are in life. The parallel is interesting though, because the stakes are basically the same. Winning, losing, emotional joy or upset, facing your villains and satisfaction. What poker has taught me is that it's critical to make the best choices and play your best hand. Another key poker and life skill is decision making. Just like in real life, poker is a game of incomplete information. You must gather as much information as you can about your opponent's tendencies and you want to play the odds but sometimes you just have to guess. Either way, what you have to learn to do is accept the consequences of your decisions without beating yourself up about them. Poker is also at times an exercise of patience. You've heard the old adage, patience is a virtue. Sometimes when I'm in a game and everyone is getting great cards and my stack of chips is dwindling away, the temptation for me is to make risky plays, hoping to get lucky. Not a good idea. I've learned to wait until the time is right. There's a term in poker, a chip and a chair, which means even if you have only one chip, you could go on to win the tournament. Never give up, never count yourself out. On the night I won my second WSOP ring, Deep into the evening, I had the fewest chips. I could have easily given up, but I was patient and disciplined. And within four hours, I had all the chips and the championship ring. <laughs> this speaks to another skill I've strengthened, and that's emotional discipline. In essence, poker teaches you to postpone emotion, but at the same time, ruminate on it for future advantage. For example, in one tournament where I had my opponent dead to rights, I had a monster hand. 
Suddenly, feeling a rush of emotion, I got excited and bet big. He gave me a smug grin, called my bet, and then showed he had the one card that could beat me. We call this a bad beat. I really wanted to lash out at him, bet against him every time to make him lose, even if I didn't win. But I regained my composure and resolved to do better next time. These are Tibetan monks creating a mandala, one grain of sand at a time. I don't think they play much poker, but with that type of patience and emotional discipline, I think they'd probably be pretty good at it. <laughs> it's human to want to get back at someone when you get a bad beat, but you have to hold back. When you let emotions take over in poker, we call that going on tilt, you carry those emotions over to the next hand and they can ruin your whole game. Anyone here ever let their emotions lead them into a bad decision? Today, if I make a mistake at the table, I absorb the lesson and move on. Emotional control is one of the biggest differences between professionals and amateurs. It can help you become more of a winner in life. Emotional discipline determines how we behave while doing business or leading a family. It's also so important to living your best life. Poker teaches you to stay even keeled, to avoid emotional swings. Poker is unpredictable just as life. We can't always know what's in the cards. There's no guarantee of a win, but with the right skills, you can certainly maximize your chances. This leads us to the read. In poker, you have to learn to read people. You may be familiar with the word tell, which is a habit someone has, which could reveal when they have a good hand or when they're bluffing. As a poker player, you learn to read people subconsciously. Your brain picks up subtle signs and you feel it as intuition. Somehow you just know when they're bluffing and when they aren't. The distinct skill of reading people has been very useful to me in many areas, in business dealings, friendships, and with my children. It's wise to invest in your understanding of others. The better you can read people, the more you can get along and have pleasant relationships. What does it take to read people? Simply paying attention. While some players get distracted by their cell phones, I pay attention to pick up clues. I listen and notice interests and personality. Intuition does play a role here, but that's something that's developed in part because I've paid attention. The spoils will come when you polish your skill in seeing what others may not see. Intuition unfolds. As I near my conclusion, let's up the ante. Poker playing keeps the mind activated. Cultivating brain skills by playing poker extends into other parts of my life, often those more important. I have a better sense of when people aren't being straight with me, and I increase the crucial skill of recognizing when loved ones need support, even though they're not showing it. I've become adept in the attributes of poker, as will you, if you study the deal Examine your hand and play the cards. Should you stop what you're doing and try to be a pro? Probably not. <laughs> if my son were to come to me and say, I want to play poker, who needs college? I'm telling you, he's going to college. However, I do teach my son what I know about poker and encourage him to practice. I suggest you give it a try even if it's just with your friends for low stakes or online for free 
with virtual play money chips. I know that poker helps me, and I hope that it helps you to improve as a person and to find pathways to better understanding of yourself and of others. To make our brains and our lives better, I hope you'll join me and play this sport for the mind.